Okay, uh, I'm going to go ahead and call the August 23rd, 2018 meeting of the Costa Mesa Sanitary District Board of Directors to order. And we will start with the Pledge of Allegiance. So if you'd all rise mm -hmm. and not mess up your microphones. We'll, we'll Take your mic with you. <laughs> uh, ready to begin. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, Vice President Ferryman isn't here. Arlene, would you say a blessing for us okay. this evening? Let us all be able to have a good meeting tonight and also be getting home safe and sound and uh, everything go well with us because we've got a lot on our agenda and yet at the same time, we take it very serious. Amen. 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 Thank you. Okay. Um, roll call, Gina. Yes. President Michael Schaefer. Here. Vice President James Ferryman. Secretary he's, he's going to be late. He's at another meeting. Secretary Arlene Schaefer. Here. Assistant Secretary Robert Uten. Here. And Director Arthur Perry. Here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Scott, any late communications for us this evening? Uh, no, Mr. President. Thank you. Uh, no ceremonial matters? None, Mr. President. Thank you. Public comments. This is a time set aside for those in the audience wishing to make comments on items within our jurisdiction uh, that are not listed on the agenda. We'll have three minutes to speak and, excuse me, four minutes to speak. And we do have a card from Mr. Kelly Rowe. Kelly? Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I thought I'd come and join you this evening to do, introduce myself and reintroduce myself to many of you. I, I'm uh, Kelly Rowe, I'm an engineering geologist, hydrogeologist with 40 years experience in water resources studies management, well drilling, seawater intrusion studies. I'm uh, very familiar with uh, Orange County Water District and uh, I'm running for the uh, position of Division 7 Director for the Board. Uh, the Division 7 covers all the Costa Mesa and uh, uh, western part of Irvine, a little bit of Tustin, a little bit of Fountain Valley. And uh, I'm happy to have the opportunity to run, and uh, I think I could represent our community much better than the current uh, uh, d division director. So I'd appreciate your support, and if you have any suggestions uh, on my campaign to outreach to people, I know you know a lot of people. You've been around a long time like I have, and I think the network of people will help uh, get me elected. Thank you very much. I'm a former director uh, from 20 years ago. Uh, I also worked at the water district uh, doing the first major repairs on the seawater intrusion barrier injection wells where I spent $2 million of the district money to improve the wells. And I also, uh, as a director, helped to encourage the installation of additional wells because the injection barrier isn't really operating like it should and it, it, needs, to, it needs to be improved quite a bit in order for us to protect our groundwater supplies. It's really a partial barrier. We need to extend it further through Huntington Beach. No new well alignments in 40 years, and I proposed 20 years ago to extend it. Nothing's been done. So I appreciate your support, and we can make our basin better. Kelly, thanks for joining us tonight. We appreciate it very much. Thank you. Uh, record reflect that Director Vice President James Ferryman is with us. Yeah, Welcome. We had a long meeting. That's what our, uh, we heard from Mark. Out. All right. I have no other comment cards, so we'll move to the consent calendar. Any items for discussion, Bob? Only one. Um, item seven is a pay recommended payment for Bob, CNR. Before, before you do that, let's pull that item. Oh, pull it. Then. We'll pull, pull item number seven. Item number seven and number nine. Seven and nine. Uh, how about a motion for the let's rest of it? Move for approval for the additional. Okay. Second. Uh, discussion? <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries uh, unanimously. I'm trying to think of how many are up here. Uh, unanimously. And so item seven, Bob, you want to discuss? Well, it's a minor thing, but uh, item seven says that the uh, approval of preparation of a warrant for CRNR for 219 plus thousand in July 2018, for July 8, 2018 recycling and disposal services in the August 2018 warrant register and it's not in there. It's not material, but it, but that, that item is not correct. Okay. 
Mr. Mr. Hodges. So it's for July services, but it's being paid in August. So it's not going to be in July's warrant register. You'll see it next month. So it's always a month in arrears. Oh, so it's a month behind. So the warrant register is a month behind. No, well, the warrant register, what they're showing you there is for the payments made in July. And, and this payment, even though it's for July services, it's yeah. being paid in August. Yeah, so when I looked on the, the warrant register under nine, that's, that's for July. <coughs> Correct. Oh, okay. Well, then, then I expect it's not incorrect. So I moved the, moved the seven and nine. Do you have another question on nine or is that? No, nine is the warrant register and it wasn't in there. Oh, okay. okay. And I didn't realize. Okay. It. Move for approval of seven and nine. Okay. Second. Just, uh, we have a motion and a second. Are there other discussion? No. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries five to zero. Very good work. All right. Uh, we have no public hearings this, hearings this evening, so Scott, I'll go right to item number one, please, in your report. Yeah, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, so, as you know, the, the board established a, a Citizens Advisory Committee, and on July 18th, the committee established the standard meeting day and time to meet what well, would be the second Wednesday of the month at 6 p.m. So August 8th was that second Wednesday, and they met at 6 p.m. Uh, your staff report is really just an overview of their discussions and some of their comments. Uh, it's just really to keep you abreast of what's going on in the CDC. Uh, this is, uh, I believe it's for uh, receiving a file, this report, but just available to answer any of your questions. And you'll be receiving these reports on a monthly basis, just so you're, you're, you're well informed of what's going on in the CAC. Just one comment, Scott. Are you going to have an opportunity for them to attend the AD facility in Paris as part of their, I know the Citizens Advisory Committee yes. probably, I mean, have you thought about including this group also? You, oh, th this group, uh, you want the CAC in? The, the no, I don't, I don't know. I mean, are you going to give them the opportunity to be in the Citizens Advisory? Sure. Advisory, sure. You know, when they, when yeah. you go to the AD facility. Yes, we, we notified them about their next um, uh, CEPA, Citizens Environmental Protection Academy. <coughs> and uh, what's new is, is we're fortunate enough that CRNR has agreed to allow taking our citizens to their AD facility. Um, so we're very excited about that. And so they are aware of that CAC. Aware. But we're also asking the CAC to help promote CEPA as well. They get the word out and ask some of their friends to participate as well. Are you thinking about a date uh, for that uh, trip to the Paris? Uh, I think it's been set. Um, I think there's a flyer on your desk with yeah. all the dates on I, there. I didn't get one. Yeah, I'm yeah okay. it's on there. Okay, so. good. Okay, thank you. Um, what, what, there, you guys went over a lot of programs. I mean, that was pretty yes. well done. Any gut feeling or reactions to how the CAC received these? Were they excited? Yeah, I think uh, yes. I, I believe there were. They, they thought it was very informative. Uh, again, it, it was. Uh, it's it's a way to inform the, the citizens of, of what we do and and also the public. So uh, yeah, I believe they were they were very uh, they were very engaging, asking some good questions as well. Good. So yeah, that was, that was a good meeting. That's that's good to hear. So they're they're scheduled for the next six months, and the first one has happened. Correct. And, so and it's the second Wednesday of each month. So the next one will be um, September twelfth. Good. I, I had. Uh, a question and a comment. A uh, question was, uh, what's the deadline for this Citizens Advised uh, Environmental Protection Academy? <coughs> so the, the first, we, you know, we, we keep, we'll, we'll take applicants up to a couple days before the first, uh, first event, which is September 7th. So okay. if they submit it to us by the 4th, we're, we're, it's fine, okay. September 4th. And the other comment was, uh, it was a good article in the uh, newsletter too. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. Oh, thank Gina. She's the one who did it. Yes, I was. I was looking right at her saying. <laughs> um, when they go on the tours, how, how many staff go, of our staff go with them? Uh, two to three. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. I think it's important for, especially the staff that hasn't well, seen these facilities. Well, I, I, correct, correct, correct me. Um, we, we do, we'll do a separate uh, tour for staff on that because, like, recently staff like we were doing yeah. 80. But as far as uh, participating with the SEPA, uh, we have a, uh, it's usually Gina and Nabila that <coughs> uh, participate. Sometimes okay. Hawaii will go too. Okay. Um, the more of us that get out there to see that AD facility, I mean, even my wife was mm -hmm. excited, got fired up when she saw it. it it's amazing. <laughs> that 
Wait a minute, it's not amazing that my wife got fired up, it's amazing. <laughs> the facility itself is amazing. I better clarify that yeah. since Barry's videotaping is up. She may see this. All right, thank you, Scott. Uh, item two. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. So this is uh, a, a submittal uh, for the uh, Rewarding Ideas Program from uh, Tony Gomez. He's our SCADA technician, industrial electrician, and he submitted uh, an idea to uh, put in, install some more uh, flashing warning lights on our, um, one of our trucks, our, our crane services truck. And we thought this was a, a good idea because safety is our number one priority for our staff. And this is another opportunity to uh, increase their safety while they're out in the field, make them more visible to oncoming, oncoming traffic. Uh, so staff is recommending the board approve this application and awarding um, Tony Gomez $100 for his, his idea. Move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any other discussion? Uh, it was a good suggestion, I think. Very good suggestion. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries five to zero. And of course, give the Tony the board's gratitude for doing what he's doing. I will do that. All right, item three. Thank you, Mr. President. So this is a um, uh, consider approving a contribution application for the Coast of Mesa Newport Harbor fish drive. Uh, the application submittal is to request uh, the, the borrowing or the use of four of our generators uh, at the uh, at the three-day event. Uh, this is not the second time or not the first time they requested generators. We provided generators to the event last year and I think even the year before. So, um, so as it says in your recommendation, um, you, you know, you first, as part of this program, you need to establish a purpose the district is trying to serve by, by having this program. Describe how the contribution will advance the district's purpose and approve, approve the Coast Mesa Newport Harbor Lions Club contribution application requesting four district generators to the fish fry. I, I don't think there's any question that um, the district's purpose and direction is well represented. In fact, that the Lions Club gives the district a booth to Correct. I think is really a yeah, Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, I yes. think it's really important. Yes. I'd like to make a motion to accept it. Okay. We have a motion second. to approve and a second. I have and a question. Jim? And Mr. President, excuse me, uh, Director, and as part of your motion, you should make the findings as identified in the staff report because it's laid out well there, but you just need mm -hmm. to make those findings as part of your motion to have a clear okay. record. Okay. Along with the uh, findings that were presented to us, Okay. I approve. Art, okay with you? Is seconder? Yes, I agree with okay. that. Jimmy? Um, we do supply the uh, fuel for, for the generator, or does it, does it? The club pays for the fuel. Do they? Okay. Yeah. Well, I just want to clarify that. Well, the question, you know, last year or two years ago, we asked if we could fill those back up. And the, Scott told us no because we, they want to make sure if the, it's properly handled. Yeah, the correct fuel. So I don't know if. Yeah. I oh, think, that's right. I think the district picks up that cost we because do. they don't want anybody screwing around with we do. the, the yes, gas. That's true. We do. We, we do. We, we do fill it ourselves because okay. we, oh, okay. we want to make sure the right uh, fuels in there, and we want no one, you know. Right. I can see that now. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So, okay. Now we have to coordinate um, the pickup. I think it's on Friday morning from the yard now, right? Yes. Not from the city yard. From our yard. Our yard, correct. So we have to coordinate that. Correct. Uh, with think Mike yes. McElroy picks those up yes. and delivers, and then. Then he takes those back also, doesn't he? Yes, correct. Okay. Do, do you do you provide? Does the district provide the fuel for all of the, the um, generators that are? Well, the, in only, the, the only other entity that the borrows generators is the city, and we still feel that use the yeah. fuel. We don't ask okay. them to refuel it. We still. If there was ever a cost factor that you wanted to assess the the fish fry or the Lions Club, they would be acceptable to that. Okay. But I mean, it, so that's a this something you have to decide. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll find out from staff, um, you know, how much it costs to... to uh, well, I think, it, I think we should abide by whatever policy is in place. Right, right. but I'm just saying if they decide that's a, the policy they want to adhere to, then if we they should, want to change the policy. Because I asked them that, how much do we owe, but Scott says we want to take care of it. Mm -hmm. I don't think the cost factor is that great. I don't either, but I, 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 I think you have a good suggestion. You know. Do we keep... Uh, an agenda or some kind of a, a book on how how often we are using these generators you for know, community to events. the public. 
for community events. Again, the only one that I know of right now is, is uh, for the city at the Snoopy House. When they do the Snoopy House, we, we've loaned our generators for a couple of years for them. That's the only, and then the fish fry. Those are the only two events that I'm aware of that uh, we've loaned our generators out oh, to the community. Okay. And, and they're on the record, on yeah, this record anyway. Right. So. Yeah. I was just curious. Okay. You, you like them to be exercised anyway. You want them to be run yes. periodically yeah, to make sure they're... That's good. Good absolutely. point. You know. But I just thought it would be interesting to note how often it is used and, and how the public is aware of what we're doing with this. Absolutely. I mean, it's open to other public sure. agencies. But, sure, you know, but they might not know about it. I'm not sure. Okay, okay. Uh, then... Motion. Did I call for the vote on that? Not sure. I did not call for the vote because no. there were questions. All right, all those in favor? <laughs> Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries five to zero. Okay, Scott, thank you. Mr. Hamers, thank you, your Mr. turn. Thank you, Mr. President. A couple items of note. We have project 314, which are grade five repairs. Phase 10 is virtually complete. And our last phase, phase 11, is out to bid. And that will be done soon. On the president pump station, that's also out to bid. We ran into some events that caused us to do some redesign. So. Instead of having bid opening be today, it's mo we moved it until next Wednesday to give the bidders more time as they requested because we had to issue some addendums with revised plans and all. And then uh, we're winding up the plans for Canyon Pump Station in Force Main, and that will be out to bid shortly. So we're still moving along on all the projects. Good. Um, based on the recent activity we had, uh, was it last week? Um, and, it, and after looking at those pictures that you showed us the other morning, um, I get to think, how, how many of those closed space type situations do we have? Or, Eric, do we have? Like the one that we have the SSO with? The, I'll answer that. The closed space you're obviously referring to is that the air release valve is inside a cell in the bridge and we have to put an air release valve at the high point of a line and the high point is usually in the middle of the bridge because they slope it in both directions to drain the water off it and the cell which means it's not really solid from the top deck to the bottom it's an it's open and there's four or five cells in there. And they do allow utilities to put their lines in there because they do have to cross freeways and all. So our force mains in there and it is the height of the cell is four and a half feet. So our man has to go in a confined space entry, which means he has a harness and a gas detector and he's on a line, has to go down into that cell and crawl or shimmy down to where the air release valve is. We did, when we built the force main, we asked for a manhole cover right over the top of the air release valve, but Caltrans said no. So uh, they put the manhole covers where they wanted to and claimed it was for structural integrity. but. We had no say in that. So that's really the only air release valve that's in a confined space. The rest of them are open. Uh, we have one in another bridge, but there's no top on that bridge, the little utility bridge at 21st Street. So we have a half dozen air release valves throughout the district. So this was the only one, again, like you said, in a closed Yes, it's the only one that's in a in a enclosed area like that. That we have others that are in the valve vault, but when you open the valve vault, a man can stand in there and his head's almost above the ground. So it's not like this. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that explanation. 
Anything else? Any questions for Rob on the just CFP? Just one. With the new construction on the 405 of the bridges, are, are any of our lines going to go through those? No. Okay. The, uh, the lines that cross the 405 that are sewer lines are all underground. And we refuse to accept those as part of the transfer when right. OCSD wanted to give us right. those, That's what I we thought. said no to the lines under the freeway because that would have broke our bank if we ever had to repair one of those. Does OC, OC still own those? Yes. They've been transferred to San Ana or Tuscan? Nope. Nobody will take those. Okay. And they belong. Uh, they're the rightful owner. Okay. Just yeah. a question. All right. Thank you, Rob. Your second item. Thank you. That is a conflict of interest declaration for my firm being engineer for 163 Broadway, which is a new single family home. So I will prepare a likely prepare a little sewer plan that shows connection to the existing lateral. And that will be checked by Rudy Davila the OCSD alternate engineer, like we usually do. So it's a very small project, and we've done the disclosure. So is that going to stay a one resident lot? Yes. Okay. Because I know on the east side, there's trying to develop more multi-resident yes. lots. Yes. Uh, there are, exactly. Some people are trying to add the granny unit under that rule and others are taking advantage of the R2. Thank you. Thanks, Rob. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, Mark? Thank you very much. Counselor, anything for your report? No, you should be receiving uh, little readings on the Santa Monica trial. Uh, hopefully you're all getting that. Yes. Seeing how that's going is pretty interesting. Sounds like they're not getting along very well. No, they're not. They don't seem to be uh, playing nice together. <laughs> is it, so is, is Mr. Shankman the defendant in that suit? Is that my? He's the plaintiff's attorney. He's the plaintiff's attorney, yeah. not the. Along with the city of Palmdale's ex-mayor, who's also a plaintiff's attorney, and Milton Grimes. Those are the three plaintiff's lawyers. So Santa Monica is the defendant. Santa Monica is the defendant. Okay. And they're represented by Gibson, Dunn, and Crutcher, the big, the big firm. Okay. Well, I hope they, uh, they all have good boxing gloves. <laughs> all right. Uh, takes us to oral communications and director comments. Before we do that, do we have a need for closed session tonight? It's on the agenda. Okay. So let's do oral communications. And okay. I'm sorry. How about if we do local meetings first? Um, James. Well, we. Uh, the Orange County Sanitation District, uh, Bob, uh, uh, what's his name? <laughs> Retired, you know, Bob, Bob Gorelli. Bob Gorelli. Yeah. They had a real send off for him. I mean, he got all, all kinds of uh, plaques and awards. And, and then uh, I hosted a little uh, uh, get together of the staff at my house after the meeting was over and uh, you know, it was, it, everybody really came together and mm -hmm. Bob was so appreciative. I mean, it was, it was really moving. Good man. Yeah. Good man. Thank you. Anything else for OCSD? Uh, real quick meeting was, there wasn't anything of significance. Thank you. Art, you want to talk about SARFA? Yeah, well, I left SARFA a little early because to get to this meeting, maybe Jim, if I miss something, can fill in, but uh, <coughs> uh, was, we had a, voice um, communication with Jim O'Connell from Washington, D.C., and he said that the uh, budgeting has been really good this year because it's been a two-year budget, and they expect to get uh, $2.23 billion for allocations for the Corps, and it's like $100 million to $150 million more than they did last year. But in the new monies for the Corps for Orange County is like $15 million in new money but they can use the money that's left over, that they have another 150 million they can tap into if they need it. So he just talked about that and he wanted, had a short conversation and then the colonel 
His name is Colonel Aaron Reisner from Chicago. It's called the Great Lakes Chicago area. He made a presentation. He made the introductions and he made a presentation. And then his staff made the audio presentation and the visual presentation to the people in attendance, which was a large group today. And uh, my analysis is that after listening to the whole thing, it's the cost factor is going to be, if they, there's three different options, a minimal, a maximum, and a one they refer to as a um, moderate. And the cost factor is going to be 65 percent is going to be paid by the federal government and 35 percent from the local agencies. It could be cities or the county. But those, that amounts of money are pretty significant. And any, any, anything that's going to be uh, started on is going to be, won't start till 2025, but in October of this year, they're going to make their plan out there to the public for comments, which they're moving better than I thought they would be. But um, I think they were favorable to the moderate, moderate, which would cost about, uh, I think the, minute, the moderate was like uh, $58 million. But on the, the graph that they gave us, Every year, the estimated cost right now for damages, in, they'd listed in four different areas. CO2, CO4 was $11.4.2 million, .11, million in annual damages every year to the Westminster watershed. And then the CO2.5 and CO2.6 were $77.502 million every year. So the total damages right now, and they figured over a long-term basis, it's not every year, but it's over a long 25-year period, is $88 million a year for damages right now. So the Corps and the federal government, they don't want to spend any more than what the damages cost per year. So that's, that, that's why they have the minimum, maximum, and the moderate figures to keep it under those amounts of damages. And um, they, have, they had a lot of graphs up there, and it doesn't affect Costa Mesa. This is just the Westminster Watershed Program. Mm -hmm. And I, because I asked, because they, they had a big green section that it, on a real bad flood area. And I said, is that Costa Mesa? And Herb Nakasone told me, no, that's Huntington Beach. But um, it was a pretty good presentation for the time I was there. And I thought, it, Alan, if you want to look at this later, because it could affect you with Fountain Valley. But there was a lot of good questions asked and a lot of good answers given back. But I think the Corps is in favor of proceeding with the improvements of the watershed. And there's a lot of things that come into effect. You know, you have the, uh, the land areas like uh, Balsa Chica. They have to mitigate all of those things first before they get started, which is pretty significant. Oh, yeah. But uh, there's a good presentation. Maybe Jim could fill in that, because I left to come to this meeting. Jim, anything I Yeah, it, it went on and on. Uh, very good questions. I had many of, of my committee people come up to me afterwards and say, this is the best meeting we ever, we've ever had. Yeah. And those Army Corps of Engineer guys know their stuff. Yeah. And I mean, it, it was very impressive. Um, but I, I reminded them that, you know, dealing with uh, the environmentalists in the Bolsa Chica area, mm -hmm. uh, they're probably gonna need some of our help. I mean, you know, the groundwater replenishment, we spent like seven and a half million dollars on educating everybody we can get in front of for like three or four years before we ever approved it. And, uh, you know, this Bolsa Chica thing could be this, of the same ilk. And uh, they, they agreed that they, they've got to deal with that up front. So we made some good points, and those guys are right on top of it, I think. Uh, they, they, they don't want to fool around, but they've still got to wait for Uncle Sam. That's the key. Yeah. But that's, like Jim said, it was a really good meeting for the time I was there. And I, I thought about all the time that we've been talking about this. This is the first time we've got <laughs> some pertinent information. That's, right. That's great. So Very good. The, the study will come out in uh, October. And then uh, people will give their comments about it. Good. Okay. Good. That's about it. Okay. Is Doc, um, just give you tell you briefly, it appears that the overriding agenda for ISDOC has become LAFCO. In every ISDOC meeting we go to, it's focused on LAFCO issues, which, uh, you know, again, having the two top people on the board, two of the top people on the executive committee being 
LAFCO commissioner and alternate commissioner, they seem to have taken LAFCO or ISDOC into a LAF, LAFCO mode. And I'm not sure how long that's going to go on. We, we did talk about the dues, the dues that I still need to talk to you guys about. Um, it didn't, it, it, it's not being sent out to the districts yet because uh, President Fister sent them all to an attorney to look at. So now we're waiting for the attorney, whichever attorney it is, but uh, spending a lot of time on LAFCO issues that don't seem very productive to me. Um, the one highlight of the meeting was that uh, we recognized Phil Anthony for his service. You know, Phil passed away a couple weeks ago and they appointed yours truly to replace Phil on the OCOG Board of Directors. And welcome. Mike. Thanks. <laughs> and I don't know if you went to the meeting today, but I, I did. I was in Sacramento, so I could I told uh, Marty I that. There. But uh, thank you for your open arms and <laughs> walking me to OCOG. I appreciate that. Um, and that was really it. Um, not a lot. I mean, we spend, again, we spend so much time talking about OCOG or about uh, LAFCO that we don't get to other things. And so. Um, in that same vein with LAFCO, I, I will tell you that uh, Arlene and I and Nolani attended the LAFCO meeting two weeks ago, three weeks ago, whatever it was, 8th of August, to present John Withers with our uh, proclamation and our little trash truck. And I got to tell you, we were the first one on the, the first one, the yeah. chairman called us up first, and the rest of the people who gave accolades to... Uh, uh, John couldn't match our presentation. I mean, yeah. <laughs> we, we heard so many compliments about how good we did, and uh, so thanks for getting that. He was touched. He really liked, really liked that. And, uh, some of the comments that were made were kind of interesting, mm -hmm. um, especially from Mr. Fistler. It was, in fact, after Fistler got done, Peter Whittingham says, "Is this a roast of John, or is this a you know?" <laughs> it was interesting. So. Yeah. Uh, Arlene, you want to talk about CSDA? Yeah. Um, actually, on ISDOC, the only thing I would oh. add is that there's 27 special districts that they announced, which I thought there was 30-something. 30 uh, 34 cities and 27 yeah, yeah. special districts. Well, there's 27 in, independent, yeah. independent yeah. special yeah. districts. Yeah. And then so there's they, six dependent said that. special districts. And uh, then um, on, on this LAFCO, let me tell you, that was so fantastic because we were first, and because of being first, and and uh, actually at the start, what Mike did, he just gave a little talk about you know uh, how it was so nice to have John on for so long, and the job, good job he did, and so forth. And he said, and we have something that we want to present, and he pulls out this truck and. The whole place just went, oh, and was, couldn't believe it. it Nobody cool. could top it. It was true. It was just, it was fantastic. So and, and that was your idea, so thank you. In the audience, they kept saying, you know, well, we want this for everything like that. <laughs> oh, you know, that's the only one that's good. It was so fantastic. Do you think Fister would retire if we promised him a little truck? <laughs> no. No? Okay, strike that one. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, that was good. And then uh, on the LAFCO one, I have um, some information here, if anyone's interested in it, which deals with LAFCO and the procedures and the policies that I took along with me. And uh, then also uh, on CSDA, I sat through um, a half a day session of a webinar on um, Friday, August 17th, long one, because we're ending up everything, and so it was just so full of all the legislation and things that are going on right now. And I did bring it if anyone's interested in looking at it. It's, it's a real thick agenda. And uh, then also, what else is there? There's, um, oh, CSDA, of course, is having their conference coming up in September, and it's the 24th through the 27th, and uh, it, sh it should be a fantastic one, seriously. And I hope all of you got your little book that tells you some idea of who um, will be presenting, and they always have great speakers inspiring you and you know, motivating you into 
coming to everything. And then ours, yours truly, um, Scott will be doing, so you want to be a general manager? <laughs> and he's kind of taken that over. CSJ loves that he does such a good yes, job. Yes, they do. And there's so many accolades off of it, so it, it really makes a difference. He's done it up in Tahoe, and now he's going to be doing it here, which is great. And there's a lot of audience on that, too, because you know usually at least you get 40 or so, and people are very interested, and then they have tests and everything, so it gives them an opportunity. But um, I think all of us are going to this, right? Yes. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So, and then, of course, on the 23rd, they'll do the golf, right? Monday. Yeah. 24th. Mon 24th. Oh, 24th. I'm sorry. Okay. And aside from that, there's nothing else. Thank you. Thank you. Um, SDRMA, uh, I <clears throat> got in this afternoon from a lengthy trip up to Sacramento Tuesday through today. Um, myself and Board President Gene Bracey are the committee to select a new CEO for SDRMA, or at least to, pr to give the board candidates for the CEO. So Gene and I spent Tuesday and Wednesday morning interviewing uh, a short list of candidates. Um, really, a couple of really interesting people. I mean, interesting from both sides. We had one young man who, who uh, applied for the job from Nashville, Tennessee. And he uh, was a former police officer. Wow. And he did such a good job as a cop, they made him the risk manager for <laughs> the Department of Treasury for the state of Tennessee. Gee. And he, he paid his own way out there to be interview. He came out on Tuesday, or he came out on Monday. We interviewed him Tuesday morning. And he had to fly home Tuesday afternoon to be at a meeting in Nashville. Uh, very impressive young man. Um, we, we interviewed one guy by, by uh, Skype yeah, because he's in Oregon. Mm -hmm. And a very impressive man, a young man. He, he told us a lot of things. and. On his resume, he had put that he was a big Portland Trailblazers fan. So I asked him, I says, if you move to Sacramento, are you going to take up rooting for the Kings? And he said, no. <laughs> so I said, okay. I said, so who's your favorite baseball team? And he must have done a little research or he must have done something because he goes, oh, he says, I'm a big fan of the Angels. Oh. <laughs> and I went, really? Oh. Well, he grew up in Yorba Linda, so he, oh. yeah. yeah. Um, we, we've narrowed it down to three people, and I think, We'll have a uh, a very robust and uh, good CEO to introduce it at our breakfast at the CSDA conference. I, we're going to make the. I have to go back up next Tuesday. Be there Tuesday and Wednesday, and we're going to pick the our uh, our new CEO next week. So because yeah, the word is out that yeah. it's going to be at the CSDA yeah. conference, whoever it is. So, so. Um, the rest of the business. We had our quarterly financial update. And the big topic, Mark Abiner, the big topic with our financial people um, was the effect of the tariffs and how that's going to affect our portfolio. We talked about a lot about that this morning. Um, we had a legislative update from our attorney, David McMurchie. Uh, and the big thing with that was, and I'm not sure I understand it completely, but basically <laughs> there's a bill that's passed the Senate that's going to the governor to take unfunded pension liabilities for CalPERS, and it'll affect JPAs, so Joint Powers Authorities, will now be responsible for any member who, who falls out. If the, if the JPA goes out of business, then all the members in that JPA have to pay for everybody's unfunded liabilities. What? What the and they hell? can even retroactively assess former members of the JPA to cover the cost. And David says, it's passed. I mean, it's gonna, he, says, passed? I'm not, he says, I'm not sure the governor will sign it. Ugh. The governor would be crazy to sign that because I think it'll yeah, throw, well, oh, throw a big legal well block. It. Yeah. Um, now, if it, it gets held off until after November, um, it's a pretty good chance that Governor Newsom will sign it. So, uh, <laughs> Anyway, it was, it was an interesting discussion. We, and we had some other discussions um, over the last that. two days, but... Uh, I'll, I'll tell you that even in the transition with SDRMA, we're finding some things that need to be fixed, but uh, we're still in good shape. We still have enough money to pay our, um, sorry about that, Barry. I keep tapping the desk, sorry. 
So um, we still have plenty of money to pay claims. And uh, interesting, mm -hmm. our, our claims manager, Dennis Timoney, was telling us that uh, with all the fires that have happened all yeah. over the state, yeah. um, we've only had one really serious claim and it had, it's with a uh, sanitary district up in Northern California oh. that lost a shed and lost two pump stations to the fire. So the rest of it's been, we've been pretty insulated wow. from it. So I don't bad. know yeah, who that it, was. It's funny, flying in and I was telling Art, flying in and out of, uh, or telling Bob, I'm sorry, flying in and out of Sacramento the last couple of days, it's hazy as all oh, get out up there. I heard that. Yeah. You know, it, it, even coming into Orange County this afternoon, you. It's hazy, and it's, you can tell it's smoke. It's not smog or anything else. Yeah. Okay, um, Art, do you want to talk about Waco? I'll talk about two other ones first. Go, go for it. Because I, I attended uh, one meeting with Scott with the uh, business perspective on homelessness on August 8th. I think he gave you guys a report of that on this weekly meeting, but I, I noticed that there weren't that many business people there. You know, there's more public and people interested in the homeless situation and city people. But uh, Costa Mesa has the, you know, they have 17 member task force. They have the largest task force and, and concerns about in Orange County is mm. our city, Costa Mesa. Wow. Uh, they have compassion with the code enforcement. You know, the number one reason for uh, homelessness is uh, they, can't get a, they can't get a job. There's no jobs available for them. That's the number one reason. Mm. Then mental health and cost of affordable housing, which, you know, is pretty high. Yeah. And they have family issues and addiction and mental health, so, which I've stated before, but they had a number of five or six speakers from the city task force, and they did a good job of explaining what their role was with the police, the uh, homeless solutions people. You know, it was, a, it was a pretty good meeting, but I think that they can do a better job with getting more businesses there. I don't know if Scott thought that or not, but it was a pretty good meeting. It lasted like an hour and a half, two hours. Wow. And I, I went to the walkability, bicycle walkability, bi bikeway and walkability committee. Uh, and you guys should attend one of these. It's pretty good. It was at the city hall, um, 1A down, down below. And they have a, you know, a pretty good crew. You know, from the district, school district, you got Kurt Baumeister there and Brent Stahl from the Chamber of Commerce and Katrina Foley is a council member represented. But their main concern was and their main topic was the widening of 17th Street. I don't know if, if you're aware of that, Rob. On the east side? On the west side, west 17th. This is a proposal down the road. Okay, mm -hmm. that's west side. Okay. West side, yeah, west going side. from Pomona Street to Placentia. Huh. And they're, they're concerned because it's a bike, bike, bike walkability. They want to try right. to create more bike lanes, but still preserve the integrity of the street, they're gonna widen it possibly. There's like three or four different options based right. on the cost factors. Oh, but this God. is gonna be coming down the line <laughs> probably three or four years, but they're talking about it now. Raja from the city made the presentation with the city staff, and they, they gave like three or four different options that um, possibly might happen. Very interesting. Yeah, so I thought I'd throw that to you because I think we have, they said that we had a sewer on 786, Yes, we have a, we have, Sewer in West 17th Street. Yeah. yeah, in the street. But they're thinking about in the street. They're thinking about widening the street. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, that would affect. I don't know the uh, you know the sewer lines to all the businesses. Yes, it does affect the laterals. Yeah. So I thought I'd just give you a heads up on that. It may be years from now, but uh, they're talking about it now. And Cal and Caltrans is or OCTA is talking about helping with the funding of it. But uh, they've already got uh -huh. the design study going based because they have funding for that through a grant. But Very this committee seems pretty good and, and uh, some real good ideas. Yeah, but they'd have to. So I just thought I'd bring that up. Thank, Thank you. you. Good job, Mark. Yeah. Um, yes, I would recommend attend. They, they meet like once a month. Okay. That's the first one I attended. Yeah. I had a question. On the uh, homeless part, does the Chamber of Commerce enter into this? Well, I'm going to see who headed up. Was, it was called. Uh, I, well, Janet Crockman was the MC. She's a CPA for, I'm not sure what her title is. She's, you know, an, Scott, she's an independent Scott CPA. Probably knows that. He's it, on the it's it's a chamber event. It was a chamber event. They sponsored oh, yeah, the right. event, and they asked us and the city to, oh, to okay. sponsor it. 
Okay. But it was their ho they hosted the event. Well, the host, the, the location was the women's Bruce's club. Is, yeah. Oh. Yeah. On 18th yeah. Street. Yeah. And it was so hot that day, they have no air conditioning. They had fans, so the fans are going on while people are speaking. Oh, so we suggested to the city, if they have another event, they could yeah. possibly use our facility. Here? Because yeah. oh, we absolutely. have the parking availability. And, but, sure. Uh, so Scott, I think, talked to... Uh, Sure. Dan, Dan Baker about it, so. Great. Yeah, that but, makes sense. But that was, it was a pretty good meeting, really. I'm thinking the city's doing quite a bit for the homeless, as mm -hmm. much as they can. Mm -hmm. They had, uh, they've already um, placed 277 people into housing, housing in Costa Mesa over really? the last year. So maybe Very the last good. couple of years, I, I'm it's not sure. They said they, that's what they placed in the housing. Hmm. Hmm. And they have uh, 200 people off the streets in the last uh, number of years, so, which is pretty good. Even though we have still have a problem, but did they have anybody from the school district there? Not as a speaker, I don't believe they had. No, not uh, as a speaker. But Muriel Ullman, the idea that John Biggins, Mike Broomball from the I think the police that's department. All city. Officer yeah. Hernandez, how he handles the problems. Yeah. Elaine uh, Benjamin from the chamber. Yeah. And then uh, Terry Covington from uh, ProStar Security. And this this Terry Covington lives in Costa Mesa. And he's the one that's going to be helping us at the fish fry for security. Good. We yeah. thought that might be a good tie-in because the city and is hiring him for helping the homeless solutions, because that's one of the requirements. So. Now you know you might we might say something at a liaison meeting about to the um, uh, the actually Newport Mesa Unified School District because you know their their kids are affected by this. And at the same time, they should participate in this to hear what's going on and how they could help. I don't think there's anybody from Newport Mesa, was there? I'm sure uh, there isn't, probably but there not. should be. Mm. But I, I thought it was a pretty good meeting. Yeah. I, I'm sure they're going to plan more of them to get the word out. And I think they, they re, you, you spoke too, Scott, about what we did in the, about the uh, portable restrooms. But um, it was yeah. pretty good. Okay. Um, with, before you start on Waco, yeah. uh, we, three of us were at Waco. You, you and I, and Jim. Yeah, you and I, and Jim. That was a long time ago. I can't. Yeah, remember. me either. <laughs> <laughs> it, um, they had Paul Paria, per yeah. who's see. a farmer. He's an almond farmer. Oh yeah, that's it. Paul yeah. Paria. And uh, he spoke before too. I, yeah, he, he's a really good speaker. I mean, this is a guy he that is, knows yeah. his stuff and talking about the water issues. Um, with you know, with with agriculture and especially in the Central Valley, and so it was he good. didn't really he he just had a verbal presentation and he didn't have any visual presentation, so we kind of ran through different topics. Yeah, but he, uh, he, he says we have the American? safest produce in the world in California. Uh, it's a total security interest making sure that the produce in California remains at the high level, because if it goes down because of lack of water, I think he was, that was his point. Yeah. Lack of water. That become and uh, he, I think he's an almond grower, isn't he? He's, yes, he's an almond, almond grower. Right. Yeah, oh. and uh, he's like fourth generation. He's almond right by grower. San Luis Rey Reservoir. Out there. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. But uh, see, he they, he exports forty three to forty three countries the almonds that they produce. Wow, that's pretty good. I wanted to ask him how they get almond milk. I, I don't know. Some people squeeze, that came squeeze up. it. Squeeze it. it. Do they have he, to milk the almonds? He never told us how he did it. Yeah, he never did, did he? he never, because somebody brought that question up, yeah. and he never. He just bypassed that. But that was basically from Waco. It was just a verbal presentation. I thought he did. He, he did He's a, good a job. very good speaker. Even. Yeah. Again, he did. guy that knows his knows his almonds. That's for sure. <laughs> so, um, any other meetings? Meeting? Okay. Then. Let me tell you about Michigan. No. Does it anything to do with the district? <laughs> then we don't want to hear it. Um, oral communications and director comments, anybody? Bob, do you know? Oh, I just, um, I got a note from um, Orange County Sand District that, uh, that I am up for ethics training. Is Nalani in or going to be in? There, there is an ethics training at uh, CSDA's conference. Uh, Didn't we just conference. do that? Well, I we think just went through that schedule. We did the we did it sexual the harassment. Well, that was sexual oh. harassment. Yeah. I think, they, I, 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 I think I'm due by the end of August or something. So. But anyway, well, there is you could, one. You if, could do it in, uh, in yeah. September, probably. Yeah. And 
I mean, you have to talk with Nalani. Well, I don't know. We ought to have Nalani check on us and see if we're up to date. I, I'm, yeah. Mr. Yeah. President, if I could speak. It, it, yes. If you don't mind, it, um, staff would encourage you to get it done as soon as possible because we need to submit our recertification for um, CSDA's uh, uh, um, certificate of distinction. And that's one thing they look at is make sure all the board has their uh, ethics training, their sexual harassment training, staff has all that done. So I think I'll do it, but I'll go on the F FPPC website. Okay. We need a, our, a course. our deadline to submit the application is, t is September 15th. So it's just okay. a couple you weeks. You can ago. also go through, uh, what's the educational portal that we have through SDRMA? Do you remember? Was it? Target Solutions. We have that available. And I think we can actually do it in the, the room, the extra room down here. There's a computer. Maybe uh, Gina or Nolani could let us know where all of us stand. But I think I'm yeah. okay, but I'm not sure. I, no. I'm okay. I know I'm okay. No, I thought I was, but Orange County Sand District doesn't have a certificate. They mean just not have your current certificate. You might check that yeah, too. No, that's what I'm asking. Okay. okay any other communications no just wanted to comment which i did already i think on the newsletter i thought it was an excellent one yes and it covered a lot of important topics that we wondered about yeah, we had one of our costa mesa residents greg woodside at the meeting jim and i left and he was congratulating oh. us about what oh, a fine good. newsletter that was i think we do a really and his good wife has really Express great interest in it oh, good. Good. we normally have it in, in spanish and english we started that what Three months ago, roughly, maybe more than that. Yeah, yeah. it's everybody I, I talked to a lot yeah. likes. So congratulations to you. Yeah, yeah. You do a great job. You're doing a great job. On it. Yeah. Um, the, the one comment I would make, and, and again, it accolades to staff. Um, I think the effort that you guys did with the recent SSO, your quick attention to it, keeping us informed, mm. and and the work. Especially the guys, like we we're talking earlier, Rob, the guys that had to crawl down in that hole. Um, I think it just shows how dedicated, how committed you guys are to our community, and uh, I, I appreciate the work that all of you did. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we mitigated what could have been an even bigger problem. So that's a good hallmark for for Cosme Sanitary District. So mm -hmm. well, thanks. It was a leak in the pipe that goes to the air release valve. So it's a, a little yeah, pipe. Little I know. Yeah. Well, it was interesting how all the organizations came together too, OCTA and everybody. That yeah, I, Scott and Art and I met Monday, and I asked Scott to put together a letter that, to be signed to send to the other agencies mm -hmm. thanking for their support. So, Okay, anything else? All right, then uh, we are going to adjourn to closed session for a conference with legal counsel on anticipated litigation. Mr. Mr. President, I think we do have one. Mr. Mr. Mitchell wants to speak, if that's okay. I don't have a car. Do you have a he, car? He just, I won't. Okay. <laughs> I just figured you would. Hasten, um, so before we go, before we do the, your comments, I just want to say significant exposure to litigation pursuant to government code section 54956.9, one case regarding a letter from attorney Kevin Shankman dated March 26th. Received March 29th. Now I'll take your card. I'll take your card though, Jim. Just give it to me before. Well, just give it to me when you're done. Mm -hmm. We want to make this official and on the on the record. Yeah. Th uh, thank you, <clears throat> President Schaefer, members of the board. The the notice that you just said read says you need to meet in closed session to discuss the exposure to litigation due to to the letter which you just cited, and I reading the agenda which. My card is late because I didn't know you were going into closed session. My comment is the public has been told over and over again that going to district elections was supposed to solve the problem presented by this letter. It was supposed to avoid the litigation and at least limit any exposure we had. So if, if we now believe that going to district elections is not going to shield the district from litigation over this letter, then I think the public deserves an explanation of what has happened um, since we were last told that that was going to solve the problem. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Burns, do you have any response? Sure. Um, we, received just, yeah. we received a letter from Mr. Shankman on the uh, fees reimbursement that he's seeking, and that's what we we're talking about in closed session is he submitted a letter um, in public record for $30,000. $30, 
we, we availed ourselves of the safe harbor provision. So we're uh, requesting to meet with the board in closed session to discuss those subjects. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. All right, then we will adjourn to closed session. Uh, okay, I'm going to reconvene us to open session. Uh, and regarding the matter uh, anticipated litigation on uh, government code section 54956.9, um, letter from attorney Kevin Shankman, uh, that there is no reportable action this evening. And so we'll close that, we'll close that, reconvene, to, we'll be we're back in our open session. And if there's no other items, I will adjourn our August 23rd meeting. We will done.